next up, sticking with a botanical theme, but this time with a with a botanist, is uh, Sandy Knapp, who's going to be talking on, if I can get the right one, on Solanaceae. It's not that one. What else is there to talk about but Solanaceae? Okay, this is the combined. <laughs> I'm just gonna, sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to fly through those. There you go. Yeah. Okay, great. It's very kind of Vince to have asked me to come and talk at this because I actually don't do scratch pads, not yet. But I want to describe to you a little bit about a project that I've been doing for about the past decade and some of the, some of the issues we've had transferring it into an easy open access platform. So I started working on something called Solanaceae Source, which was a web resource for all taxonomic information, first on the genus Solanum, which is the genus to which potatoes, tomatoes, and aubergines belong. I started that in 2004 with an NSF grant under the Planetary Biodiversity Inventory Program, which, which funded us for uh, four, five years to do this major taxonomy. Now, this was one of the first e-taxonomy programs that actually funded people to do content and not just presentation. Most of the other e-taxonomy projects at that time were all about converting what we are, doing the analog to digital kind of conversion, rather than actually doing content in a digital kind of way. So we had this website, which was called Solanace eSource, and this was developed within the museum. This, there were a number of challenges associated with this. First of all, about doing collaborative work. How do you do a collaborative project when the institution wants to brand things institutionally. So I had, we had issues about that. We had issues about um, how you presented the data, how the data were licensed. There were a number of things that we worked through with this site, which actually paved the way for things like scratch pads to come in the future. So this website is often long forgotten. It actually doesn't work particularly well anymore, partly because as part of the NSF project, we had a dedicated website and data manager. And when the project ended, that person ended, and there was no way for me, a mere taxonomist, to update that website at all without going through a huge, complicated sort of um, content management bureaucracy and system. So that was tricky. So we decided that what we would do is we would move this entire website into a Scratchpad environment. Now we've nearly completed that, and the people who are person who's actually the people, the person who's actually doing that is Catherine, who's sitting back there. And it's been a really wonderful experience for me to figure out to, to actually have something that I can go into and put my latest fieldwork blog on the front page so we can actually see it, so people can see the fieldwork that we're doing without having to burrow deep in to some other website. They can see what we're doing in the science of this particular um, endeavor. What we've done that's different with this Solanaceae source scratch pad than is true of many of the other scratch pads is that we're porting data from a centralized database to which many people have access and many people use, which is held in a database system called BROMS, which stands for Botanical Research um, and Herbarium Management System. So it's not actually the composer, but it's a nice play on words. And one of the reasons that I started using BROMS and don't necessarily use the system that we have here in the museum now is that that wasn't available at the time that I started. Brahms is an incredibly sophisticated system for handling botanical data. We port both taxon data up here at the top, and you can see that there are various statuses associated with those different names, so it allows us to say how synonymy works. And it also allows us to look at botanical records, which unlike zoological records, which exist as a single point, actually have duplicates, which is one of our issues with porting botanical data and using botanical data in many of these systems. So we're nearly finished with this. We, we do XML dumps of Brahms, and we're, we're fine-tuning this system. But we've had a, little, a few little problems along the way. And I just thought I'd highlight as part of this lightning talk what those problems are. Is how do you do this pipeline to interface? How do you do something where you need to interface two systems together for which you need to build a stable pipeline? And what's been wonderful is Catherine has been working very closely with Dennis Feiler at Oxford to build this Brahms scratch pad interface, which will now be able to be used by lots and lots of other botanists all over the world who use Brahms as their main database. The nomenclatural 
the nomenclature, the how you work the names, is very sophisticated in Brahms. And it wasn't so sophisticated in the scratch pad system. So figuring out how all of that works has also been a challenge. And I know that GBIF has confronted this challenge because I've talked a lot with the developers in GBIF about how, how this nomenclature works. What's a homotypic name? What's a heterotypic name? What's, why do we have invalid names? All that kind of stuff. The specimen duplicates issue has been a problem. And images are also something that we're struggling with about how we connect those up via Brahms and via the scratch pad. So those are issues we're still dealing with. But what I like about this system is that it's a work in progress. You don't have something that's frozen in time. You have something that you can continuously update and improve. And for me, that's what's been the excitement of moving from the old system to this new open data, open access, open accessibility, collaborative environment. Thanks, Vince. Fantastic. Thanks, Sandy.